And the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. 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 Thank you. Please be seated. I'm going to do something a little different today. For the last couple of years, I have taken my sermon time on a given Sunday, usually in September, to highlight some aspect of the ministry here at All Saints. Uh, today, I'd like to lay out some of the work that is done on a typical Sunday, much of it behind the scenes. One purpose is to simply demonstrate how much is required in facilitating uh, weekly Sunday worship and how many uh, assist with this. And secondly, I want to expose you to opportunities of service that you might want to engage, things that you might be gifted in or desire to do. Now, most worshipers arrive at church and take for granted that what they come to expect will be ready once again. And this is as it should be. When we arrive at church, we have left behind the worries of this world, the weight of this present age, and we come with expectations of a visitation from the age to come. We come believing that God is present and as he has promised, present to bless us in his son, Jesus Christ. So we need to come then free from worries, free to give our hearts and our minds to the adoration, praise, and worship of God and to happily join in the fellowship of the saints. And for me, it is a joy to observe that there are pe people, many people, who are committed to ensuring that when you arrive, you are free to worship and you are free to learn and you are free to fellowship with the saints. Now, when you come, you are not attending an event that we have created in order to meet needs in your psyche or your social life. When we come to worship, we are coming to what Paul the Apostle refers to as a pillar and buttress of the truth. He's referring in this statement to the church, to the Ecclesia, the ecclesia, the, the gathering of the people of God. And he puts it this way in 1 Timothy 3. I hope to come to you, he wrote. I hope to come to you soon, Timothy. But I'm writing these things to you so that if I delay, you may know how one ought to behave in the household of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and buttress of the truth. To his church has been given the privilege and responsibility of having a foundational role of publicly displaying to the world the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. True churches all around the world serve as a pillar and ground or buttress of God's truth. Now, pillars and buttresses are needed to serve as supports for larger buildings in order to enable larger buildings to stand. So, as a pillar supports an entire superstructure, so the church supports the glorious truth of the gospel. And that's what's happening right here. In this place, according to God's design and God's provision, the gospel of grace in Jesus Christ is proclaimed here in word and sacrament, demonstrating what Paul says the church is to be, a pillar and buttress. 
And as his worshiper, you are a part of this. And I, for one, don't want to miss out on this. I want to be a part of this. Jesus promised his disciples that he would build his church during this present age. And at Pentecost, he sent the Holy Spirit, who has since been equipping his church to function as the church. Some are called to be pastors and teachers. In our Anglican tradition, we refer to these as priests, deacons, and our senior leaders as bishops. Not all Christians are called to these offices. But all Christians receive what Paul calls in the book of Corinthians, grace gifts. Some are speaking gifts, some are serving gifts, some are administrative type gifts, and so on. I don't think he ever gives us an exhaustive list of gifts. Rather, all he teaches, all are endowed as, quote, with the manifestation of the Spirit, for the common good. That's y'all. That's us. That's this place. Not necessarily a theologian, but I like what he said. Robert Schuller used to put it. In the church, it really comes down to find a need and meet it. Find a hurt and heal it. So, if you see it, do it. If you can. If you can't, find someone else. Who can? Don't let the needs go unmet. Be an active part of the body as God has gifted you. And there is a lot that goes on toward that just on a given Sunday. There are people committed to making sure it does. So I'm going to try this morning to enumerate these activities that facilitate our Sunday worship. Now, the larger groups, I'm not going to mention by name because I've already shown a draft of this to a few, and they said, what about, what about, what about? So, <laughs> I, you know, you start listing names, you get in trouble. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do groups, and I'll have the group stand. You know, you know who you are. Uh, and then please, you know, I know you want to, if we're that kind of people, but don't clap, you know, until maybe at the end we can do it all together. Uh, but that'll save some time as well. Uh, so I want to start with behind the scenes ministry. We first start with the altar guild in our sacristy here. Sue Cheryl is the president of this guild. And there are, I believe, four teams of three or four people on each team. Every week, one of these teams prepares our altar space for worship. They ensure the linens are according to the liturgical season. Uh, they set out the sacred vessels and utensils that we use in worship. And then after the service, they ensure that all are cleansed and put away, ready for use on the next Lord's Day. They also tidy up the nave, that's where you're sitting, the sanctuary space, as we tend to call it. They set the hymn board, and they help put the bulletins together. So if you are on the altar guild, if you would just please stand. Just so we get a sense. Yeah, good group. There are probably more that aren't here. Thank you. There's the bulletin team. You're looking at a bulletin. You're using it. It's an all-important work done by Tom and Margaret. Uh, without whom, uh, yeah, I'd be at a loss. They work closely with me and Christy to ensure that we're all on the same page and that we're in sync with what's called the lectionary plan for the weekly propers. That is the selected readings and the collects for that Sunday. They change and they help us all be together there. And Christian and I also work with them on the hymns and songs of praise that we sing to make sure, again, we're all together. So, uh, Tom and Margaret, would y'all just stand so that we, uh, in case there's somebody here that doesn't know who you are, this is our bulletin team. Thank you. There are also the ushers. Uh, David Kaiser is our head usher.
They greet you as you enter with big old smiles. They assist you with getting what you need for worship. If we have visitors, they greet them and get contact information if needed and if possible. They assist with the offering and with directing the flow of traffic, as it were, for those who are coming to receive Holy Communion. So if you are one of our ushers, would you please stand? I know when you're a certain age, you can't stand around anymore, but <laughs> thank you. The Flower Guild, beautiful flowers, pretty much every week except during the season of Lent. Uh, we have three members now. Teresa Kaiser started this team. She was soon joined by Elaine Bailey and most recently by Jeannie Ballard and they take turns providing colorful flowers for our place of worship and it's wonderful to be greeted on most Sundays by the beauty of God's creation. So would you three or two, I think Elaine's on Zoom, you can stand too, Elaine. <laughs> Thank you. We have a Zoom ministry now. That was a word that didn't exist just probably a couple of years ago. But since COVID, we have a social media platform for broadcasting our service. Uh, we have three people right now who are trained to do that. Tom Buford does that. Uh, Kathy Pierce and Kitty Miller. So would y'all stand? Uh, well, I guess it's Tom. Kitty and Kathy took a break. Kathy's doing Zoom. Oh, she's she doing Zoom? Oh, that's right. Oh, no, Kathy. She's at work. <laughs> she's working. There she is. So uh, Zoom is an interesting little animal. But, but we're, we're getting there. We've improved a lot. It's amazing what, 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 what we've done. And we also have a recorder each week. Uh, Virginia records on this nice little tripod up here uh, our services and that are on the website uh, that you can go to at all sites. So uh, would you plan, uh, plan, would you stand, <laughs> Virginia, so everybody can see you as well. Thank you. Uh, we have a kitchen team. You know, Anglicans eat food and we drink a host of beverages. <laughs> and this requires a lot of preparation, a lot of planning, and a lot of cleaning up. We have potlucks. We have uh, Advent and Lenten suppers. We have uh, snacks before Sunday school. We have receptions for special occasions. And it takes a lot of work. Barbara Fuller uh, is our kitchen captain, and she has been serving uh, for a while and with a host of helpers. So if you help with the kitchen, uh, and there are probably others that just pop in, please stand. If you want to work on the kitchen, please stand. But thank you all. Yeah. I'm sorry? We were their host in the last few months. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, a very needed ministry for what we do. If we have a religious education team, uh, primarily now done by the clergy and by uh, Brandon, uh, our, our resident theologian. Uh, so, um, Brandon, would you stand for those of you who might not know you? And then Linda and Sammy Joe over here, would y'all stand? And we primarily do the teaching. I think we've got a few others do teaching now and again, but this is primarily the religious education. That's our Sunday school, our, our Lenten studies, our Advent studies, and once in a while we do classes on like what is Anglicanism and so forth. So those are that. The beautiful sound of bells and chimes. If, if you notice when you come in, there's usually bells playing uh, outside uh, from our electronic carolin. Uh, it was gifted to our con congregation uh, a few years back by Lila Kay, and, and it has uh, served us well. It has to be programmed and set so you hear what's being played uh, when you arrive, and Betty Derryberry is our bell ringer. Uh, Betty's not here today, but thank you, Betty. We have a cleanup team. In many churches, this is called the sexton. Uh, Bruce Nicewander, who's recovering from knee surgery, uh, he might need a little help in the near future, uh, is our uh, sexton. He does the work both inside and outside. And again, Betty Derryberry helps him uh, during the week as well. We have a setup team, people who make sure that this room is set up and other things that are doing Somebody has to do that, and again, Bruce is in charge of that, and the ushers usually chip in and help out as well. We have a finance team. Uh, 
our, I, I'm so <coughs> grateful that our church is so faithful in giving of tithes and offerings. Uh, and, and to assist us in that stewardship, we do have a finance team. And every week they collect the monies that are given, they count the monies that are given, they record the monies that are given, and they deposit the monies, not in, they take it to the bank and deposit it there. Uh, every week. And uh, I assure you that. And, and I, think, I, I think this is the present group. We have Tom and Roy and Sue and Elaine Weeder. Is that correct? Okay, would y'all four please stand and so people can recognize uh, the money lenders. The money <laughs> They weren't thought that well of back in the day. <laughs> and last but not least, we have the worship team, uh, the people who uh, are more up front in the leadership of our weekly worship. Uh, we have our clergy, those who are ordained to the pastoral ministry. I'm referred to uh, in our tradition as the rector, which means the senior priest, uh, the only priest. <laughs> that was easy. Uh, but we do have an assisting priest who comes once in a while, Father William, and we're so ha happy that he's in the area and, and that he's able to assist us. And then we are blessed to have two deacons uh, who are also ordained to the pastoral ministry as, as deacons. And they've stood already, Sammy, Joe, uh, and Linda. And we are blessed to have a verger. A lot of churches don't even know what that is. I didn't like four years ago. Um, and boy, how do you make it without a verger? I don't know. Because the verger is someone who pretty much has their eyes on everything that's been said up to this point. Uh, and especially as it relates directly to worship. Uh, one word that is used is ringleader, but... Maybe it's not the best one. The coordinator's a good one. Uh, she's going to a conference, and she's probably going to show them uh, how it's done because she's been wonderful as our verger. So thank you, Mary Lou, serving in that capacity as our worship coordinator. And then we have our wonderful musician, Christy. If, you know, music is, is such a blessing. We're going to sing probably a whole lot in heaven, and we'll probably, uh, we sound pretty good now, but it's, it may even be better then. Uh, but uh, Christy... Uh, plans, prepares, and prays over what she plays, and it beautifully facilitates our worship. So we're so happy for her. We have lectors as our worship uh, team. You heard uh, Pat read this morning very beautifully. Beautifully, uh, We have a whole team of those who read God's Word. Would you stand if you're a lector? There's several that, uh, some are here and some are not here perhaps, but we have uh, several people who have committed themselves to reading God's Word in a public format, so thank you. We also have <coughs> acolytes, that are, those are uh, those who serve in liturgical celebrations. That's basically the description of an acolyte, and they reverently lead us in dignified uh, corporate worship uh, by bearing the cross and other things. So with all our acolytes who are here today, if you would stand <coughs> as well. And uh, Kathy's coming in, there she is. So, and then we have a, a small group of limbs, L-E-M-S we call them, lay Eucharistic uh, ministers, and they go through additional training so that they are qualified uh, to assist with the offering of the cup in Holy Communion. They can do that here when we are perhaps without our deacons. Uh, and then they are also able to go to homes and offer it to people who can't come to worship. So if you are one of our limbs, I think we have four, uh, I don't did I write them down. We've got uh, Mary Lou, uh, Roy, uh, Justin, and Margaret. and Margaret. Yes, so thank y'all for the work you do. Um, I probably left out, uh, well, I was also going to mention too, based on what we all experienced today, we're blessed to have a resident theologian and Dr. Brandon Meeks. Brandon, uh, well, we've seen Brandon, he's, he's been around, so we're, we're so glad that God has sent him our way as well. We're blessed. And uh, so I'm so grateful, and, and thank you for bearing with me to go through this, but I think it's important for us to see that we have so many dedicated worship leaders, and their help each and every week is essential to make our worship 
what it ought to do, ought to be. And both the Altar Guild and the Acolytes have dedicated prayers uh, that they pray that are suited to, I believe, all who worship. So let me read those prayers. The Altar Guild prayer. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you have desired to be worshipped in spirit and truth and in the beauty of holiness. I humbly ask you to fill me with your bountiful spirit and bless the work of my hands and the thoughts of my heart's heart that I may serve you in holiness as I prepare your altar for worship, that the congregation may know you through your word and sacraments, and may your name be exalted in this place through Jesus Christ, my Savior and Lord. And the acolyte prayer, be present, Lord Jesus, be present. Grant that I may faithfully and loyally serve you in love, and through my service proclaim in all things, God be glorified. Amen. 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 Well, I've mentioned at least 12 to 14 to 15 needs that are filled each and every week by faithful saints to help prepare us and to facilitate worship at all saints. At another sermon or another time, I want to mention 12 or 14 areas of service that happen during the week outside of what happens here on Sunday uh, that are also uh, facilitating the work of the church. Um, so again, let me, let me go through this list very quickly. For you to be able to worship without worry and concern, we have a worship team of clergy, verger, music, lectors, acolytes, and limbs. We have an altar guild, a bulletin team, ushers, flower guild, our Zoom team and recorder, our kitchen team, our religious education team, a bell ringer, a cleanup team, and a setup team, and a finance team. And none of that would be possible if we didn't have a church vestry. You don't see them doing maybe a lot on Sundays, but they are the board of directors, as it were, and it is their job to make sure that the physical and spiritual well-being of this church is being taken care of and I do would I would like for them to stand as I mention your name we have our senior warden is uh, Margaret Buford uh, we also have Margie Lambert we have David Kaiser Gary Weeder and Joel Bailey so for them and all that I've mentioned let us thank them as we praise God so thank you these works liturgy. It's a word that means the work of the people. Now our work is not work done in order to get God's attention. Our works are done because we have received God's attention. As per our gospel text today, we are the lost sheep. We are the lost coin. We cannot find ourselves. We cannot save ourselves. These two gospel parables demonstrate that it is God who searches and finds, and he searches until he finds. This is one reason we don't give up on the lost. God did not give up on us. He does not abandon us to our foolishness, but he reclaims us from our waywardness. And when he does, the text says there is rejoicing in heaven. When a sinner returns. And so worshipers gather in humility and in happiness that God has saved us. And we offer the works of our hands and the thanks of our hearts as our liturgy to the praise and glory of God. Amen. Amen. Please stand as we confess our confidence.